Hi, my scholars. This is my school channel, and my name is Abiola. For today's lesson, we are going to be discussing trigonometry. So, do you like to know more about this? Please come closer. Right there, we have the trigonometric ratios, your socatwa, the inverse of the socatwa, your trigonometric identities, your trigonometric tables, and so much more loaded in this video. So, do not go anywhere. Stay with us, and we will be right back. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So right here we have slides prepared for this presentation. So we kick off with uh, the meaning of trigonometry. So you can see that the word is actually spitted. So we have the word trigonometry is derived from the Greek word tri, which means three. Okay, so we have the gon, which means sides. All right, and we have the metron, which means measure. So that means we are talking about um, three sides measured or measuring three sides and the angles involved. So trigonometry is the study of relationships between the sides and the angles of a triangle. So trigonometry deals with triangles, its sides and the angles and the relationships that exist between them, of course. So we have our early astron astronomers use, use it to find the distances of the stars and planets from the Earth. So we see that these are just um, daily life applications. So even today, uh, most of the technological advance, advanced methods used in engineering and physical sciences are based on trigonometrical concepts. So we see um, typical applications as well. So we have the next slide. So we see another definition as well. You can see trig ratios. All right, so trigonometric or trig ratios involve, you know, for short, um, many um, scholars will refer to it as trig. All right, so we have um, ratios or trig involve the ratios of various side length, right, in relation to the angles of the right angle. So uh, the length, the various um, length sides or the sides or the length of those sides in, re in relation to the angles. Okay, of a right angle triangle. So, of course, you know, we have different types of triangle. which said this earlier in um, geometry. You know, you have your isosceles triangle, your sigmoid triangle, and of course, we have this um, the right angle triangle, and uh, as well your equilateral triangle. Okay, so you can see the expression we have the sine theta, we have the cos theta, we have the tan theta. So, this is your angle 90, right? This is your angle uh, theta, then you have your expression right here. We're going to identify the size as we have identified the angles referred to. So let's move ahead. So calculating sine, cosine, and tangent. So basically, at first, we need to be able to identify our sides properly. All right, so this will determine how we um, invite the correct um, trigonometric ratio and how we apply them correctly. So at first, you can see the longest side that actually connects your opposite and your adjacent. That is your hypotenuse. So it's usually the longest side. And you can see it is actually facing your angle 90. So we have this. This side facing the opposite angle. We have it. Then the side connecting this and this. All right, so you can see uh, the line that is actually connecting the angle 90 here and this angle, right? That is where we have your adjacent. So for your sign, that's where you have your so -katua. So your sign is actually your opposite over your hypotenuse. So if the opposite here is 3, the hypotenuse is 5. So your sine theta will be what? 3 over 5. We we'll see that right here. So then we have the cosine, right, or the cos for short. So you can see we have the hypotenuse, we have the adjacent, of course. So you can see this identification is just to tell you what sides you need or you require when you are applying the right formula. So when it comes to sign, the sides you need to identify properly, all right, or you need to put into application, okay, will be your opposite and your hypotenuse for your cosine, to be your adjacent and your hypotenuse. Then for your tangent, it will be your opposite and your adjacent. So you can see your so, your ka, your toa. All right. So this A adjacent, H hypotenuse, this is opposite over adjacent. So this is a typical expression of how we should identify the sides and apply the right ratio. So let's move have the next slide. Okay, so we can see right here. So we have your sine theta, your sine A. This is a sine A. You can see the angle facing here, or the side facing here, that marks for your small A. You can see your B, 
in side facing here, that's your small b, you have your c. So the sign for a, right, will just be your opposite, right, over your hypotenuse. So you can see the side opposite a is actually the small a. You can see then we have your hypotenuse, the longest side, so you can see the expression right there. So this is what you have basically once you're able to identify your sides. Of course, we've created examples for us to understand these concepts very well. Then you will now have the inverse of each of these ratios, right? So the inverse of sine is referred to as your cos your cosec, right? So you have it right here. Then the inverse of your cos will be your seconds, or you can refer to this as cosecant or cosec. This is your second, right? So uh, when you have your sine as opposite of hypotenuse, the inverse of it, you know, you just have to switch uh, the numerator for the denominator or, vi or vice versa. So the inverse of it will now be your cosec or the inverse of sine will now be hypotenuse over opposite. The same thing applies there, same thing applies here. Then when it comes to tan theta, you know that tan theta or your tan a or your tan alpha, whatever um, expression you are using is actually your sine theta over your cos theta. So the inverse of tan theta or tan is referred to as your cotangent, right? So the inverse of it will not be that the cos comes up and the sine will goes down. So the, your cot theta is in the inverse of tan theta, and that is equals to what your cos theta over sine theta. So this is another expression that we should take note of. We have the next slide. Definitely, the um, Sokatua method we've just seen earlier is a traditional method you know we use to express our trigonometric ratio. So we now have the modern method right or the modern application where, where we have our four quadrants right so you can see the quadrant is being uh, moved in the anti-clockwise direction you know clockwise means you move from 12 1 2 3 4 5 back to 12 right but when it comes to the quadrant application you move in the anti-clockwise movement right so we move to 12 11 i'm just trying to use uh the clock imagery you know to explain this so in the first quadrant this quadrant is 360 you know some of angle in a circle is actually 360 right so the first year we have 90 we have 90 we have 90 we have 90 so 90 plus 90 so right here we have 180 right here we have 270 and right here we have the 360 complete so all trigonometric functions right here your sine your cosine your tangent your cosec your seconds your cuts right they are all positive right here so you can see of course this is positive x axis and positive y axis so everything here is positive right then we move to the second quadrant right so this side is 90 degrees and this side of course is what 180 degrees so we can see for your second quadrant we have all the uh, identities or function the functions being put together here so we have cos and its inverse we have tan and its inverse we have sine and its inverse so basically in the second quadrant your sine is positive every other function is negative so you can see negative is being attached to the expression we have right here so for this place your sine is the only positive function that you are going to have right here so in the third quadrant your tan is the only the tan and its inverse of course so you can see tan and its inverse which is cotangent they're actually positive every other expression will be what negative then when you come to the fourth quadrant of course you can see that only cosine and its inverse they are going to be what positive every other thing here will be what negative so let's take this again your first quadrant you know you have all the trigonometric functions they are all positive in the second quadrant only sine and its inverse is what positive in the third quadrant only tangent and its inverse is what positive then in the fourth quadrant only cosine and its and its inverse is what positive so you can see positive x y axis positive y axis positive y axis negative x axis just recall your um, cartesian graph you know we have right here we have the negative um, x axis we have the negative um, y axis we have um, of course we have the expression right here so we can see all of this works beautifully and perfectly well so let's move ahead Okay, so we now have, um, still this is an expression of just what um, I've implied earlier or explained earlier. So all quadrants, all here they are positive. So you can see your sign is positive here. Your tangent and its um, inverse, they are positive here. Then your cosine and its inverse, which is second, they are positive right here. So we can see that this is an emphasis regarding what we have learned about this quadrant earlier. So let's have the next slide. Of course, we have the negative um, 
function or the negative angle, right? So recall that when we are moving for our regular quadrant, you know, we moved like this anti-clockwise. So when we are moving for our negative angle, we move in the clockwise direction. So if you are moving from the clockwise direction, that means you are starting from 360. And you know in the um, 360 quadrant, the fourth quadrant, what do you have as positive only? That is your cost. So every other thing that you see expressed here, we come out as negative. So if your sine theta, you know, for negative angle is actually negative, it's going to come out as negative. The only thing that will come out as positive would be what? Cosine and it's what? Inverse. So you can see, that's why you can see sec and cos, they're actually positive. So if you are moving for your negative angle, you know, you are going to start in a clockwise direction. In your normal quadrant, you start in the anti-clockwise direction. So this is what all these concepts are about. So we have the next slide. Then we have our trigonometric ratios expressed in tables. You know, this will actually help us to um, see the full picture, right? And we can actually run some comparison as well, express our values using sort, right? So in sort form. So you can see that your sine zero degrees, right? You can see your sine 90. You can see your sine zero. You can see your sine 180. You can see this. You can see this. So basically, you can see that the value of your sine, right? sine 0 and sine 180, you can see the relationship there, your cos 0 and cos 180, so it's like the negative form of this, you can see, and as well, if you notice the relationship between your sine and your cosine, the relationship there is that as sine is moving this way, your cos is actually moving in the opposite direction, so that is why you will see in your complementary angle that your sine 90 minus theta equals your cos theta, do you see that your cos 90 minus theta is actually your sine theta, I'm going to explain all of those concepts as we move further, so you can see that right here, your sine uh, so your sine zero degrees is actually equals to your your cos ninety um, degrees. You can see the relationship right there. So you can see that your sine sixty is the same thing as your cos thirty. You can see the relationship. So it's like a uh, flip side um, thing. If you move ahead, of course, we are going to see all of this. And of course, your tan theta is actually from your sine theta over your cos theta, basically. So you can see that somewhere identify as not defined. That's basically because you have your numerator as zero, and as such. That um, gives you an undefined expression. Some will uh, use um, the infinity sign to um, replace this. So whichever presentation you are given, you are still good to go. Let's have the next slide. So this is still another representation. You can see the pi over 6, the pi over 4, and all of this put together. So you can see what I um, identified earlier. So some use infinity sign, some use undefined. So you are still good to go. So these are just for emphasis. You can as well study this table for yourself, and you know you can use it to tap out values when you are working around your trigonometric ratios. So we have the next slide. So right here we have the trigonometric identities, you know, trigonometric equations. So it is very important that we know our identities, very, very important because the applications are very salient. So you can see we have the reciprocal identities, we have the Pythagorean identities, the half angle formula, we have the product to sum, the sum to product as well. So like I mentioned earlier, the inverse of your sign is actually your cosecant. Uh, co the inverse of your cos is actually your second. Then the inverse of your tan is actually your cot um, theta. So you can see uh, these are Pythagoras. Um identity or Pythagorean identity where your sine square theta plus cos square theta equals one. Of course, we have these um, proofs, you know, attached to the, um, several articles or several um, learning materials that are available out there. So you can see all of these. So of course, as we move further in the video, we are going to solve examples. We are going to understand them so much more. So do not forget that this is just the introductory part of this lesson. If you need to have access to the full video lesson, all you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. Right there, you get to subscribe and you have access to numerous video lessons. And do not forget to hit that like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on the bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video content just for you.